Welcome to the Republican Professor. This morning, for me, we have with us Amanda Spears. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Man, oh. good to be here. Uh, good, good to be here with you, Amanda. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. I really, really appreciate it. Amanda, the last time I saw you in person was four years ago. Yep. Um, now yeah. you're all grown up and like an adult and stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, I'll never forget uh, that camp four years ago. It was, I learned so much, really great time. So hmm. the camp you're referring to is uh, the seven gen, seven gen, seven, seven M gen or something. I can't remember what yeah, it's called. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Miss Amanda had to listen to me talk about logical fallacies. And Amanda, what have you been doing since then? I know you're now in your early 20s and yeah. you are you have an office and wow, you look all professional. And so how's how's life? Yeah, it's been it's been really amazing. Um, basically, since since the last time I saw you um, kind of jumped right into my career and um, I did an internship right after that at the Leadership Institute. And I've been there ever since, um, kind of working with, with young people and helping them get involved in the conservative movement. Um, whether that's from different think tanks, nonprofits, basically anything around there. So mm -hmm. it's been really awesome kind of seeing the journey and seeing how exactly I can help people with this. So it's been a great time. And you're, you're doing this work as a communist? So you, you uh, got, yeah, no. <laughs> wait, wait, are you a you're a conservative? Yes. Yeah. Surprisingly. <laughs> right? That okay. That makes sense. Okay, that actually makes more sense. Okay, yeah, I just yeah. assumed you were a communist. Oh come on! You were young. <laughs> I go by young. I don't go by yeah. You know, no, looks. It, it makes sense with the with the demographic in the country right now. I've dealt with yeah. a lot of them. The last couple of so years. a lot of a lot of people your age. Well, tell us, for example, for, first of all, how old are you? Do you mind? Yeah, so I am 22. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what is it like being 22 in America right now? Not yeah, that you have but... anything to compare it to, but like, just <laughs> we're just interested in hearing what you what your thoughts are about everything. Well, it's anything, really whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, no, for sure. I, a couple of different spins when, when somebody kind of says, hey, what is it like being young in the country right now? First of all, yeah. um, when I'm talking to people my own age, it can be really disheartening because mm -hmm. um, I worked on college campuses with different conservative groups for many years, and it was right. tough talking to some of them and seeing, hey, you know, the stuff that they believe in is everything that has ruined this country so far. Um, a lot of them were sta staunch um, communists. Some of them wanted to get rid of police completely. Um, some of them had Those no idea. Those two things are in con conflict, <laughs> being a communist <laughs> right. and wanting to get rid of the police. There's no yep. way you can be a communist and be against the police truly. So that's like <laughs> totally incoherent, but because it's yep. a police state. Communism yep. is a police state. You need the police to enforce all your horrible laws. Yeah, it was one so. of my favorite things to talk to them about. They were always like, oh my gosh, we should get rid of guns. Um, <laughs> and then that getting rid of guns in general and then getting rid of police every single time you could really stump them just by having like a few logical arguments with them. Wow. Um, always so a really do you, good time. Do you, do, you, do you, during this time when you were working on campus, mm -hmm. campuses, did you dialogue with people? Were they open to dialogue with you? Um, it was about half and half. So I had the privilege of uh, working in Florida. So there was a little bit more open mindedness than maybe in like some other states. Um, but okay. there were still, especially more so in South Florida, a lot mm -hmm. of people who would just kind of, you know, flick you off or just kind of cuss you out and walk away. Um, when they these, saw. Are, these are Republicans that are cussing at you and, and flipping you off? You know, or I've never had Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they were Democrats. I never actually had um, any of the conservatives do that, which was interesting. Yeah. But um, now, yours is your perception that Democrats are mean people? No, is that, no, is that no. what you're saying? Okay, not at all. Um, I wouldn't say they're mean. I would say that there's are the young people, people mean? The what? Are the young people mean? 
some of them, but okay. <laughs> more so I would say it's the people that have really, really strong ideologies that they don't right. want to converse about them. Um, I Maybe that's because of something they experienced in their past, maybe just because they've never heard a different way, or they've always seen the other side of the argument demonized, whether that be in the right. media, whether that be you know from their teachers. That's what I think is the biggest problem is just yeah. not having an open, open-ended debate. Right. Where's this anger come from? Where's this, you know, uh, well, first of all, where's the communism come from? I mean, who is teaching <laughs> yeah. these kids communism? I mean, I, and it's not normal for a kid to run around and just start reading Karl Marx. I mean, that, yeah. that, that, that doesn't happen on accident. I was forced to read Karl Marx as a graduate student and I yeah. barely was able to handle it just because it's so, he's not a very good writer. You know, no. he's not like Nietzsche, for example. Nietzsche was, is a wonderful writer. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's very interesting to read. Marx is not a good writer. <laughs> and, yeah. And yeah. the leftist literature, it's not really the best prose you've ever seen in your life. And so what, what is it, what's the draw to this leftist incoherent stuff? Well, I think for some, I mean, I have heard some of the college students that I've talked to, they were like, oh yeah, our professors were making us research it, read it. Um, and most of these were undergrad. Um, I had a couple graduate students that I worked with, but for the most part, they were undergrad and they, the ones that were into it um, really got into it, I think just by kind of getting with the cool groups on campus that were more communist or wanting to oppose some little thing like, um, a, at Florida State, for example, they had a really big push. Um, I believe it was to like unionize Starbucks. And they were all of the like extreme, not even extreme, all of the leftist kids were super into that. And basically when you have something like that, the more and more they read into it, the more and more they researched it, they, they just came to the conclusion that communism is the great idea. Um, and that everyone should have free everything, which, they just did not think about how exactly that played out. But most of the time, once you have a conversation with them, they're like, oh, you're right. I'm going to have to be taxed more. And it's not just the rich, the extreme rich that are going to be taxed. It's also going to be me. Um, then they start to at least think about it, which is okay. always good. Yeah. Is that your yeah. goal to just get them to think about it? Um, for the most part getting to think about it and then when they start to think about it they end up coming to some speeches coming to some debates um and from there i have seen a lot of people's mind changed which is really great i i've seen some people like i used to table a lot on college campuses and um i would see some people's minds changed right then and there i've had yeah. i've seen it with the abortion debate i've seen it with the gun debate um all of that which which is really really heartening to see especially on a super liberal campus yeah okay so do you have hope for the future i do i do and what i really have hope about is the conservatives that are in this country and the conservative young people are very conservative and want to see the country changed hmm. um i think they know now that they're going to have to do something otherwise it our country is in bad trouble <laughs> so right um everybody is back on the action train, which I think is great. What's the source for your love of the country? Because I can tell you love the country. So what, what is it for? I mean, you're 22 years old. What, why do you love the country? Yeah. Um, I grew up homeschooled. My mom did a really great job instilling Christian principles into me, but I think the biggest, the biggest draw when it comes to just loving the country is seeing is studying history and studying the other countries around the world and seeing how good we really have it as Americans um, and just wanting to preserve that. Um, you talk to anyone who's traveled around the world and been to other countries and they always comment on how great and how free America is. And I just wanna preserve that for, for my children, for the next generations and make sure that we still have a country left that is just as great as it is now. You're, you have children? No, no. <laughs> future oh, children. You, you mentioned you had, you had children. <laughs> future, future. Oh, no, future no. children. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so you are planning on having children? Are you thinking about that? Um, perhaps. Uh, but whether I do or do not, I just, I want to see 
the country stay great for next generations, whether or not I had them. <laughs> so abortion is not a live option for you? And if not, why? Yeah, no, um, abortion, abortion is wrong. Just the, the moral essence of it aside, you are literally killing a human life. Um, there is no, every single, every single argument for abortion you can disband so easily. It's it's a human life. If you if you kill a pregnant woman, what is it? Double homicide. So there's no way that killing a baby is okay when we literally have so many other laws that literally contradict that fact. Um, it's it's just it's it's morally yeah. wrong. It's a whole nother conversation in itself. But yeah. Okay. Well, I wanted to give you a chance to speak your mind about any host of issues there. How do you feel yeah. about the death penalty? And what do you, what, how do you feel when people say, Hey, pro-life means you're against the death penalty? I don't know. By the way, I don't know what her view on the death penalty is, but I'm. Yeah, I've yeah. actually, um, that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Um, I think that for our legal system, for legal systems in general, you need something like the death penalty to have an ultimate, um, an ultimate punishment so that people can actually be scared of committing crimes. Um, there's been statistics where people, you know, come back to jail, like uh, not necessarily purposely, but they're in their mindset. They're like, that's, that's somewhere safe that I get fed. And yeah. there's some, you know, criminals that end up in jail again and again and again. Right. Um, so I don't know if the death penalty is morally right. I'm actually, that's something I've been thinking about a lot lately. Um, but I believe that there needs to be some sort of um, ultimate punishment. So okay. what that is, not sure yet. Also, what the reason I'm asking is because of, uh, when you said you were against abortion, mm -hmm. you were saying it kills a human being. Yeah. And so my, my thought was, okay, but what about the death penalty? The death penalty kills a human being. Is that the same thing? Yes. It, it is the same thing. Um, there is a question of innocence um abortion obviously kills an innocent human being you're and saying that innocence matters that's that's exactly what i've been uh pondering for okay. for the last couple of weeks actually i would love to hear your thoughts on that well, what do you think about like the death penalty versus um well that was really masterful how you did that <laughs> no for real though i that have been that is something that i've been very no, i've been talking a to a couple people about it so yeah, i'm giving you a compliment that whenever you, yeah, that's good to ask the other person what they think about it. Then you can respond to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's good. I'll tell you what I think. Um, I think that in the criminal justice context, mm -hmm. innocence matters. Uh, innocence versus guilt is the key thing <laughs> uh, yeah. because you're talking about criminal law. As I, I tell people I'm against throwing fetuses in prison. Yeah. So, yeah. so obviously it's not the same thing. I mean, you know, uh, I, I don't think any innocent person should be punished at all ever <laughs> for anything. Right. Um, now establishing, uh, guilt is, is, uh, is tough to do, I think, because, and we do that on purpose, we want to do it beyond a reasonable doubt. Mm. And, we do risk letting guilty people go free. Um, and I think that that's just the way it goes. Uh, certain things you have to, um, there, there are certain trade-offs that you have that you can't negotiate that, that that's just the way it is that it's a fallen world. And one of them is that you're either going to risk putting innocent people away more, or you're going to risk, letting guilty people go free more yeah and our system is supposed to be set up on the letting gu guilty people go free more uh, that's yeah. that's why we have due process protections and all that you know that's why we have the fourth amendment for example mm -hmm. um and stuff like that so um in a way too you could also agree protecting other people like in the case of oh, murder yeah. Sure. Uh, anything like that. So just by when it comes to the moral argument of, hey, yeah. you're, you're, you're ending a life, well, you might be saving others. Um, yeah. 
Sure. So that's also something I take. Yeah. And the fear of punishment is, is a legitimate use of punishment. I mean, it, it, that's biblical, for example, it's in Romans, but, um, I think for a punishment to be feared, it has to be used. Mm -hmm. And we're so cagey about the death penalty for, um, for not quite the right reasons, I would say. I think we're getting at the right reason, but we don't come at it exactly where the right reason is. Mm -hmm. But um, the, the, the fear of the death penalty isn't there because it's not used. So yeah. for example, like let, let's take speeding tickets, for example, okay. On the other side of the spectrum of harshness, <laughs> um, speeding tickets are, are harsh depending on how much money you have. Right? right. So, I mean, you know, if for a poorer person, a speeding ticket is quite harsh right. uh, for a rich person. I mean, what do they care? <laughs> they're going to hire an attorney and, and you know, squash the thing anyway, if they can, or they're going to go to traffic school. Yeah. And they're going to pay the fine and it's not going to be a big deal. So there's this inequality, uh, depending on how much money you have, of how harsh it is. But even still, a speeding tickets are fairly predictable mm -hmm. and they're used a lot. And so you can bet you're going to get a speeding ticket if you speed. Right. But if you get if you murder somebody which is the appropriate death penalty uh, crime for, I mean, the appropriate punishment for that crime is, is death penalty. If you murder some, somebody, chances are you're not going to be put to death for that. I mean, yeah. we have it in California. We don't use it because the Democrats hate the death penalty for some reason. They love prison, but they don't like the death penalty. They love fines. They like taking money from poor people. They love taking, but that's because they need the money to grow the government, which is what they want to do. They right. don't like the death penalty. And um, so if, if you don't enforce the death penalty, then um, it's not as predictable and then it's not as much of a deterrent. But I would say that uh, apart from deterrence, the retribution aspect of punishment, it, it would be justified just on that basis alone for some crimes, because what it ends up doing is a really harsh crime. You just add years to the um to the prison sentence yeah. and it's 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 like 600 years yeah you got 600 years well, nobody lives 600 years so you know that's not really a harsher punishment right you express the harshness of you're supposed to have a proportional punishment mm -hmm. worse crimes are supposed to be punished worse than less worse crimes the worst crime you can do is like murder uh yeah. you know heinous murder of some kind right so that's what I loved about what you said. I think the way you kicked off, Amanda, this whole thing, the way you phrased it, let me see if I hope I don't screw this up, how you said it. What but I think you said, um, I'm going to have to go back through the tape. That's my old person uh, word tape. I'm going to go back on the tape and re look at what you said. But I think you said that the, the uh, punishment is, oh, crap. How did you put it? You said- it the ultimate the most, yes that's what you said yeah that's what you said yeah mm -hmm. ul, the ultimate crime needs the ultimate punishment that's a matter of proportional justice so that's what i would say yeah 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 i i agree with that that's 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 why i see it as a good thing the only thing i still struggle with is the moral effect of it um because obviously the bible says that we can't make the judgment on a person's life um in in in, in essence um, thou shall not murder. So that's, right. the, that's the only logically, legally, it all makes sense to me. Um, and it needs to be there and from a legal point of view, um, the moral area is the only area I struggle. Um, but I kind of like talking about specifically biblically. Yeah. Biblically. Oh, okay. okay. Um, because otherwise it makes perfect sense. And if you don't have it and you don't use it, um, I think that's, that's really bad for the legal system. And yeah. Yeah. Because it, it makes people less respectful of human life too. And yeah. Um, for some yeah. reason, I don't think that, uh, co well, communists love the death penalty. So it is a little bit odd that, that <laughs> Democrats who like communism would not like it. It's, it's a little odd. I'm not really sure yeah. to be honest with you, how to, how to, 
um, understand that, to be honest with you, but I'm going to pull up. That... Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to share my screen, Amanda, and I'm just going okay. to share with you a scripture that I feel like God laid on my heart here. Yeah. Uh, maybe to alleviate some of your concern. Um, I like to go back to Genesis quite a lot. There's a, there's mm -hmm. a, there is a scripture after the flood when you have um, God had, this is before pride month. So God, you know, he used the rainbow for other reasons. And anyway, so there's a verse six here. Whoever sheds human blood by humans sh shall their blood be shed for the image of God. God has made mankind. In other words, the death penalty is right there. Of course, the flood was the death penalty uh, for human right. sin. And, um, and so, uh, it's the and the reason is given it's because the victim is in the image of god so it's right it's um it's because um it's because of this that's that, really good my only like idea yeah. of how i would debate this further i guess would be um in so the concept of grace obviously after jesus died on the cross um mm -hmm. was sufficient for all sin and right. when he was taught when he he turned to the guy on his left when he was hanging on the cross or left or right I'm, don't quote me on that i think it was his left um who was a i i believe if i remember it right he was a murderer and he said um the guy repented for him his sin and talked to jesus who was hanging on the cross and god said today you will see me in paradise now Again, obviously he was talking about salvation and anyone can be saved, but does that, since God, Jesus pardons the person through forgiveness, does that mean that we as humans or earthly beings should also exhibit grace towards a right. murderer if they, yeah. if they reprint or do we continue? Yeah, that that's... <laughs> that's where it gets tricky that's where it kind of get gets in the weeds but yeah the question of grace there like if you have a felon who if you have a murderer who's sitting there saying that he's a changed person and he's repenting do we still go through right. with that or is that our choice to make i don't know um yeah and that's a good thing to struggle with yeah. uh the the role of mercy and punishment um mm -hmm. I think it's also good to think, uh, well, to come at from this a different, I'm not changing the subject. I'm coming at it from a little mm -hmm. bit of a different angle. Yeah. Is reflecting really carefully about prison because I think actually Christians put more thought into the death penalty than they do prison. Yeah. And if you look at prison, mm -hmm. when you look at scripture, prison is never a biblical punishment for people. It's always what pagans do. So, for example, uh, Joseph in Genesis is thrown into prison after mm -hmm. Potiphar's wife. He, but that's a that's an Egypt. That's a pagan society. They use prison. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul is put into prison under Roman guard. That's paganism. <laughs> but yeah. if you look at the law in in uh, Exodus through Deuteronomy, you won't see anything about prison as a punishment. There's it's not there. The death penalty is all over the place. And, and then also restoration of property, restoration of, of reputation, stuff that you can steal from people. But yeah. Prison is never used as a, as a, now you might say that's just a function of a roving society through the desert. They don't have buildings or whatever, but, um, yeah, so it's 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 interesting to think about why we put people in cages, and why we're we're so comfortable with that, and and um, what what redeeming factor does that really do? Right to put people in cages like that, and and to put them in a society of people in cages, does that really make people better? What makes us think that? releasing those people back into society is going to be a good thing. Right. 
So I, I, you know, it's, it's just something that I don't see a lot of Christians really thinking deeply about They're they, they'll, they'll virtue signal about the death penalty, but they, mm -hmm. they don't say anything about prison as such as a, as a, as a yeah. crime. What do you think about that? I, I think prison is, I mean, our whole justice system is, is very broken and prison in and of itself is not something that you know, say, like redeems a person or helps them be better. Um, a lot yeah. of people that I've talked to before who's worked in like prison ministry or prisons itself say that a lot of times prisoners come out more bitter. And I sure. like that, to it totally makes sense. Say you commit a crime and then you get locked up for years. You're just sitting there, you're thinking about how unjust the, the system is. You're going to come <laughs> out and you're going to want to be even more crazy and just figure out a way to get away with it um yeah so that's why i think stuff like prison ministry the people that that go there and actually work with the inmates to mm -hmm. you know figure out a way out um my old yeah. church used to have an expungement ceremony where where they would you know have people from the inner city of chicago who c committed like um misdemeanors and smaller crimes that generally should not have had the sentences that they did um, come out, get expunged, get find a way to get back into the workforce, because that's a real problem, too, is when you is when people, you know, in their youth or in their young 20s committed more petty crimes and then they can't find a way to enter back into society as a, um, you know, contributing member of society, then that's a whole nother problem because then they go out and you have to find a way to live and then commit worse crimes. So it's all a cycle. And yeah, I think with justice reform, there needs to be a system of training people, figuring out the, what their skills are, finding out what their purpose and passions are um, so that they can, people can really do what their, do what their passions are in life. Even if that's not for their job, they should be able, everyone should be able to find, find out what that is and do it at least on the side. Are you saying like in prison, you're saying? Um, in prison, I think there should be, let's say we can't get, I think prison is necessary for at least the processing facility for, for the trials and all of that and just the legal system in general. But there needs to be a way there, like prison ministry, prison ministry, they, the inmates need to be ministered to. They need to figure out why they're there, work through whatever bondages they have that, you know, potentially right. cause them to commit a crime and just have help, whether that be mental, spiritual, whatever that needs to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amanda, are you going to college? What do you think about college? Yeah. So I am um, doing college online currently. Um, I never had the traditional like on-campus college experience because I kind of went straight into work from high school. Um, yeah. I think college... I, I, know, I noticed you went right into work from high school. and I thought that was interesting because yeah. you don't see that. You don't see people do that. You see they, they graduate from high school and then they're like, OK, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm signing up for classes um that's what i said and that's exactly how i said it amanda i said i'm <laughs> signing up for classes now uh oh. so but you didn't do that you you were like yeah time to go to work <laughs> what, yeah so what why are you different what what was that all about there was a couple um choices that came along with that so first of all i was homeschooled all the way through high school um my mom did a wonderful job and i probably mentioned that earlier but yeah um did one of the biggest things that related to that was financial. Um, I, I, I didn't, I don't believe in loans for college. I, I think that's um, not always the best decision unless you're going like a route where you absolutely need college. And there's plenty of that, like doctor, lawyer, um, yeah. you know, any of those fields, you obviously need college, but um, for other jobs, you can get a lot more experience with, with work through internships, through, apprenticeships through you know trade school is a really great option if you want to go into that so I just don't think that it's necessary for every single step for every single career journey um yeah going into conservative politics I I, I learned a lot more um by by attending seminars attending conferences um listening to podcasts and and stuff like that than I did 
by taking the classes that I am now online, I've learned a lot more through my own personal study, even like free classes online. Um, so you can basically earn college oh, yeah. through some of these free classes. And it's like, man, the same stuff they're teaching in school. Might yeah. as well do it for a little bit cheaper. So, hmm. so you, uh, you have this, you see, you have a really good business mindset, actually. Uh, you, you look around for value and cost and you're like, Hmm, same value. I have to put a little bit more legwork into it because nobody's keeping me accountable, but I could learn the same material over here for free. Yeah, <laughs> or, exactly. Well, it just uh, doesn't okay. make sense all the time to. Why don't more people think that way, Amanda, your age? Why do you think? I think it's the fear of doing something different and the fear that people are going to reject you because you don't have that piece of paper. Um, now, why don't you have that fear? Like what? Do you have um, just a really supportive family? Or I, I, friends do, or? I do have a supportive family. Um, the biggest thing, though, is, is it just... a vitamin that you take? Do you take the no fear vitamin? <laughs> no, no. Um, you could make a million dollars probably that'd be great. really I, easily. I should produce that. I'll, I get 10%. Just, yep. Put some something in a pill and be like, here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Um, honestly, Turn it was out just... like me. <laughs> right. It was... Um, really just listening to my mentors. So yeah. when, when I started this internship, I met a lot of the, my original internship that I had, I, I met a lot of really great people that encouraged me that, Hey, you, you don't need to go to school. At first, I, I really did not think I was going to be able to launch a career without it. And I was, yeah. very, I was scared at first. I was like, I, I need to do this. I'm already, you know, maybe a year behind um, mm -hmm. to, you know, build my bank account up. But when I, when I met those people and when I found out that, hey, you can do this, you have the skills necessary, you can, you can learn stuff online, you can learn stuff by working in person, um, they really encouraged me. And I still have a strong group of mentors and people that I'm able to talk to that. Uh, agree with. So you had mentors. Yes. That is something I never hear from my students. I never hear them say I have mentors. Did you go out of your way to find these mentors or did they just kind of drop in your lap or did your parents yeah. voice them on you? What, what happened? Um, I, I definitely went out of my way to find some of them. My, my mom was very into having like a group of mentors, a network, that sort of thing, a support network yeah. um, in, mm -hmm. in essence. But it doesn't always have to be like in person to some of it can be like you can have online mentors who maybe don't even know you personally but who you who you just listen to respect and you know that what they're saying um has wisdom in it so obviously i've i've mentors in person and you yeah. know my bosses that sort of thing but right. the beyond that just having people that you respect you respect their their career journey maybe how they live their lives and listening to what they have to say i think that can be really important for mentorship too yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so you got your, your value of mentors through your mom, would you say, or your dad? You haven't mentioned anything about your dad. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely through my mom. Um, okay. she, she definitely helped instill that in me. What's your mom's name? Uh, my mom's, uh, Terry. Terry. Yes. Hi, Terry. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Terry, for what you've done. <laughs> here do you have any brothers and sisters yep i have a older brother um okay yep yeah what, ge what gender is your brother he is a male <laughs> <laughs> yep do, do people ever ask you that kind of stuff because i never was asked that when i was a kid you know so like i have to ask what you're going through now i've had people ask for pronouns um oh my gosh i think that's hysterical um i've heard that before like when somebody just comes up to you and they're like, Hey, what's your name? What's your pronouns? I, that's very rare. Pronouns. Like I will say it's very, very rare, but occasionally every once in a while, I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is, is it a young person that's doing it or is it an older person? I, I wouldn't necessarily say young. I'd say uh, like not a traditional like college or high school age. I've had like people in their thirties um, do really? that. Wow. So, yep. And these are Republicans that are doing this, right? not that i know of 
Yeah. Did you grow up? Where did you grow up? Um, I grew up in the Chicago suburbs. Um, oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. I thought yeah. that you grew up in uh, Florida. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe it's well, just because you were talking about Florida. Okay. Yeah, I, I I worked a lot in Florida. I lived in Arizona for a couple of years. Um, okay. That's when I met you. I just moved to Arizona and then. Oh. Um, I so wait, at, you grew up in Chicago. What yes. part of Chicago? Um, Northwest suburbs. Northwest. Okay. Yes. Is that where all the gangs are? No, not well. Kind of. I know that I know there. South Chicago is really nice. Really swanky. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Um, I think I have that backwards, right? Yep. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. So, South side of Chicago is pretty bad. Um, Northwest yeah. suburbs are, are pretty nice. Um, it's starting okay. to get a little bit worse now, but oh, okay. um, from, from what I've heard. What was it like growing up in Chicago? I enjoyed it a lot. Um, we didn't, we went to the city every once in a while, a couple times a year. And I, I think it's a gorgeous city. The architecture there is amazing. The arts, mm. Um, very, very beautiful. Fortunately, it's sad to see what it's it's become the last couple of years with all the crime, the heavy crime and the the tax rates. Um, the lockdowns were very, oh, very bad. Yeah, yeah. What did you think of the lockdowns? <sighs> the lockdown. So it really affected me a lot because I was in the middle of my internship in, in DC when the lockdown happened. And unfortunately we got sent home early we got sent our internship was cut short um i had been hired but we had to go through kind of like a hiring freeze stage where i couldn't i couldn't start right away so i was very was it very, a paid internship um it is it has a stipend so it's okay. it, it's free housing and then stipend great internship program by the way for anyone what was, for what's the name of it what, um what, leadership what? institute it's the leadership, leadership institute. institute okay yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I learned so much from it, but Got it. it did get cut short and I had to go back home. Um, so because of that, I was in a period of, I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen. I was looking for other jobs. Um, I had a campaign job lined up, but it wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Um, and did, it, did you it, believe at the time that you were sent home to be safe and for your safety? Did you believe that? <laughs> There Did you believe like, that you were at risk of dying? There was like a two day time period where I was like, okay, maybe this was serious. Maybe this is super serious and we're all going to die. And it's probably best that we go home. Um, <laughs> after that two day period and just watching the news and yeah. everyone I know, like for the most part, got it. Um, right. I was like, maybe this isn't bad as it seems as the media is right. portraying it. And then at that point, about like a week and a half in, well, maybe a little bit longer than that, a couple of weeks in, I was just like, okay, this is ridiculous. <laughs> hmm. uh, honestly, did one you of my say days, that through your mask at home? Or you just did you say this is this is ridiculous? <laughs> yeah, Arizona didn't have the worst lockdown, which was super nice. Um, right. They they were a little bit more lenient than some of the other states, but there was a, there was a period where there were lines out the door at my grocery store and everybody had their masks on shortages. Mm -hmm. I was more scared of the economic effects. Like me and my friends were like, man, the whole supply chain is down for, we, we thought at that point, 14 days, right? We we're like, the supply chain's down. How sure. are we ever going to recover for this? And then right. now we have, the current situation so so you've mentioned the leadership institute so you started as an intern and are you yes are you now fully like employed now with them <laughs> yes um okay. so so now i run our, our christian leaders program um and so you, is, this led to a job this led to yes. an actual job wow yes it did um cool is that? start right after my internship i worked in our film program with helping um, different conservative organizations, our partner orgs start groups on college campuses. Um, we offer a ton of resources like speakers, grants, uh, activism wow. kits, and like recruitment help, that sort of thing. Um, wow. And then after that, I am working now in our Christian leaders program. So kind of like a mentorship program for students, helps them get get internships, get, get jobs in the conservative movement and gets them involved with different events, March for Life, stuff like that, that they can get involved with. Wow. So. Do you own a gun? 
I actually do not yet. Um, I, I'm do, looking. Do you not like guns? You hate guns? <laughs> no, no, no. I I like guns. Guns are very necessary. <laughs> I need to get myself to a concealed carry class. I just have not yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. you know, you can own it before you do that. I know. I know. I. Yeah. There's there's not a ton of gun stores around here. I need to make the drive out to one. So. Gotcha. Yeah. And you live in Arizona now? Is that right? Um, say? no, I live in I live in Virginia now. So Virginia, right outside. Virginia. Wow, you're popping yeah. around everywhere. <laughs> yep. Yeah, our yeah. our offices are out here. So. Where Where do you see yourself in five to ten years? Do you look far that far in the future, or do you do you just kind of take it one day at a time? Um, yeah, I, I do. I'm a big goal setter and that sort of thing. I, I want to stay in the conservative nonprofit movement. I really enjoy seeing um, individuals lives changed, changed. I love seeing, you know, a student who maybe didn't know what they were going to do, didn't know how they were going to get involved, use their passion and see their, their progression from student to internship to job to doing whatever they want to do in the future. So I really love that mentorship aspect of it and just kind of see how, how it all grows from there. But I, I definitely love the nonprofit scene. So I want to stay in this for a while. Okay. Yeah. Now, what are you working on at Liberty for your degree? Um, I am working towards uh, a business degree. I believe it's business with communication, communications um, as a minor. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that like just on your own time, uh, like after work or something, uh, like, yep. or you go to the campus? No, I do it all online. online. Um, What's yeah. online learning like for you? Is it effective? It It is effective. Um, okay. Previously, I was doing some community college stuff and it was a little bit more difficult just uh, not being able to interact with, you know, professors one-on-one. -on -one. I think that can be challenging, but you really have to be be your own teacher in essence which yeah. which i think can be detrimental especially if you're going to a degree that you really need to use all the time um whether you know some of like again medical law uh, right anything right. like that so i'm a little concerned yeah. for for the covid generation who did all their schooling online but i guess we'll see how that turns out mm. yeah so uh what are you hoping to get out of a business degree then or communication, whatever it is. Yeah, um, I'm hoping to probably learn more of the the nitty gritty aspects of business, accounting, um, any okay. skills that I don't have. I, I guess I don't really know until I until I do it. It's the skills that I don't have that I still need to learn um, to to run a business or anything like that. Do you see yourself as like? Uh, a female Donald Trump uh, eventually like having like billions of dollars and kind of throwing it around, you know, maybe running for president. I don't know. I, I used to, I used to really see myself working, working towards that and more in it for the money. But at this, this point, I'm not as concerned about that. Um, more so just concerned about the difference I can make. I know that sounds really corny, but um, doesn't sound I, corny at all. <laughs> I I'm just not as concerned right now about the money or about um probably don't, not running for office. Don't don't but. say that in your pay raise meeting. Yeah, no. Just no, FYI. No one heard you that. You keep that on the <laughs> DL. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah. what kind of uh do you listen to music? Do you watch TV? What do you kids do these days for fun? Do you play yeah. badminton? What do you do? Um, I really like hiking. Um, and oh. just kind of like any any outdoor stuff that I can do. It, Virginia is actually very beautiful when it comes to that. My my brother lives in Colorado, so every chance I have to get out there, um, I really enjoy that. But um, I like listening to music. <laughs> I I was into theater when I was younger, so love musical theater. Um, the Kennedy Center is very close to me, so whenever I get a chance, it's always fun. Yeah. So you like the arts. You have a business mindset. You're, you don't play video games. You go hiking. You <laughs> yeah. need to get a gun, and you know that I do. you're going to get a gun. Yes. Do you have a dog or anything like that? 
No, I travel too much. I really wish I could. Oh yeah, yeah, that's tough. But yeah, that's tough. Maybe get my friends' dogs when I feel that need. <laughs> now, uh, so do you have any kind of interest in gaining um, intellectual prowess through college? Like, for example, uh, studying deeply uh, history, literature, philosophy stuff like that do you have any kind of interest in studying the classics yes or, um, yeah. one thing that I've seen and you know obviously I'm still in my undergrad so I know this more comes towards the master area but okay. when I I love listening to like philosophy podcasts and um, stuff like that and I, I normally put on like throw on a Jordan Peterson podcast when I'm <laughs> um, cooking or anything like that but I'm not getting it from school as much as I am from my own learning. Um, like I, I, I e either reading the books that I want to read that I find interesting or just podcasts, honestly, have been yeah. the biggest way that I've gotten that Big kind time. of information. Um, it's never been a better time to be a learner. Yeah, that's that's more sustainable, Amanda. Good for you. It is. That is yeah. more sustainable throughout your whole life because. Pod, what I love about podcasts is you can curate what you're interested in. Yes. Uh, like my generation, the TV was on. I mean, not like all the time. We didn't have the TV on, but there was a TV. Do you know what a TV is? Yes. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I got made fun oh. of the other day um, by a congressman, actually. And oh, he wow. was. <laughs> he, These I was are the kind of circles you're running in. Dang. <laughs> well, I asked him a Dang, question. Hey, Amanda. Like, hey. Um, he was talking about like uh, AR and uh, virtual reality and stuff. And he was like, he was talking about it taking over. And I'm like, so when is TV going to phase out and like AI and VR are going to take over? And he was like, so first of all, TV isn't a thing anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. You felt old with an older conscience. That's interesting. I was like, my gosh, I guess that's a thing. Yeah. The, the, well, so we had a TV, we had a channel changer, which had two buttons on it. And mm -hmm. one was for off and on, and one was to, to make the, uh, the, the, uh, channels go. And we only had like 13 channels, at least for us, but you know, we were kind of, we didn't have cable. Thank God. We, I didn't have, I did not have uh, video games growing up. My friends did, but I did not. And, um, so we had encyclopedias and podcasts are sort of like the um steroid version of that <laughs> because yeah. you can just go down the rabbit hole as much and youtube too i guess yeah and yep. you know there's a lot of junk out there so it, it mm -hmm. you it's good to have mentors who kind of guide you through yeah. um making sure you're on the road to actually expanding your knowledge instead of contracting it and becoming dumber and more ignorant but the tv yeah. um there's so much on it's such a glut of junk and for people that just have it on and just have the news on and are so you know those are the people that are wearing the masks all the time yeah. so uh, yeah. i'm glad to hear that you have a lifelong learning goals amanda yeah and you seem like you've uh, developed into a really just solid person oh thank you we, we thank terry yes we do <laughs> so you have a good relationship with your mom how do you maintain such a good relationship with your mom is it just that you have a is it something she does or something you do or is it just genetic and you just like um, naturally like each other or what we just talk a lot i i just always make sure to give her a call a couple times a week i i good try to you. everything but it doesn't always happen so <laughs> good for you yeah. Is there anything that we can pray for you about or, or encourage you about? Do you need support in any way? Um, just, I guess, not, keep not to put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. No, um, that bear I, your soul, Amanda, bear your soul. <laughs> um, just that I continue to, one thing that can be hard sometimes working in in DC and in this area is just getting disheartened by the overwhelming um, 
amount of like liberal propaganda, liberal stuff that's always happening around me. Um, so just having that community of, you know, strong conservatives that I, I'm blessed to work with a whole bunch of them that keep you grounded, keep you centered that, hey, there is hope and it's not worth losing hope over something that you're fighting for um, is really, really important. Something that I definitely talk to God about a lot because it, it can get disheartening if you're, if you're not careful. So how did you become a Christian? Um, I, I, I have, I, I have that down, by the way, I wrote that prayer request down. So that did not just go down the, the dark memory hole, just FYI. Thank you. Thank when you. I, when I ask a question like that, it, it will go out to many, many yeah. people. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I, I was raised Christian. Um, again, all goes back to that. Um, I made the choice. I believe, I don't know the exact age I was. I think it was around eight years old, but we would listen to a lot of a lot of pastors on, on TV, different church services. And, um, did you go to I, church? I, did you actually go to a physical church? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. we went to a couple of different ones, you know, just depending on where we moved. Um, oh, okay. but they're just, I just got convicted. I started reading the Bible more intensely myself. I, when I was at the verge of like graduating high school and in my, you know, junior, senior year of high school, I really focused in our relationship with God. Cause I was, I was scared for my future. I wasn't hundred percent sure what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go. Um, so I knew that the only way to figure that out was to talk to God and really get focused on that. Um, mm. So really. So you had this conviction early on that, that God was real. Yes. And that God yeah. listens to you. Yep. Wow. How yeah. did that, how did you get that conviction? I I guess just seeing it in, in the lives of people around me and hmm. may, being surrounded by it, being surrounded by the word um, through church, through the Bible um, would probably be the biggest, the biggest reason why. And then e experiencing it for myself. Um, so you trusted the, the, the adults around you? Yeah. You trusted the adults. Okay. Mm -hmm. and and even when I didn't have that you know spark of rebellion or anything when I <laughs> read the Bible myself I saw hey this 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 is what it was you know having God talking to me that sort of thing hmm. yeah yeah so do you have any um uh do you, how do how do you look at cultivating friendships and stuff like that do you still go out of your way to to try to make sure that you have good friends around you yeah i've been i've been blessed to meet a lot of really great people through where i work so i have developed some really good um friendships mostly through my work at this point um and i have a really great church here in dc also um that i've been attending for a couple couple months now it's a brand new church so I've met some really great people through there but mostly through work is where I've made some of my best friendships and not necessarily just through where I work but also I work with a lot of partner organizations a lot of tend a lot of conferences that sort of thing um so I made are, a lot of friendships through that are you able to go to church now like yes a physical church okay. yeah um I found Amazing. a really great one in DC that a couple of my coworkers actually uh, work at Union City, DC, if anybody's looking for one. Um, when do they meet? Is it a traditional Sunday service? Sunday, yep. Sunday. That's old school, Amanda. <laughs> yep. Now, yeah. do you wear ripped up jeans or, you know, do you put your hair in a mohawk or, or I, are I, you wearing like a Sunday dress every time? How do you dress um, normally? I actually work with the kids' ministry a lot of oh, Sunday. No kidding. So, um, yeah, it's uh, so it definitely a mohawk is what you're saying. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Blue Mohawk, actually. <laughs> no. um, definitely can get a little bit messy there. But when I do attend service, how old are the kids? Um, most of them are toddlers, oh. toddlers through. Uh, I think our oldest is like 10. OK, so it's a smaller church then. Yeah, well, we actually it's it's very new. It started last year. Um, so very, very new church. And, and it's, it's actually it's in D.C.? Yes. Um, okay. oh, yeah, it's, it's in the city limits. So it's right off a of mentor stop actually. So how, how do people understand 
how close DC is from you in Virginia? Like if they don't, so, maybe they don't know how close it is. Yeah, so I'm in Northern Virginia, which is pretty much, basically there's a river that separates um, Arlington, Virginia from DC proper. So it's literally like, I think it's, I'm three metro stops away from DC. If is that how you travel into DC? You, you're on the, the yeah. is that a subway or is it above ground or is we it? We call a, it the metro, um, okay. Okay. <laughs> but is it, it, is it, it is, below ground? Yeah, it's mostly underground. Does so. it go under the river? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Aren't you scared? No, if, I mean, if I, it, there's a lot of fires that happen, but the metro system is very unreliable here. It's not the best, but what are you going to do? Is it cold in this, in the winter time? No, actually, I don't know yeah. how they do it, but it's yeah. always cold in the summer. The air conditioning is always pumping and they oh, have good. heat in the winter. I'm actually very impressed with how they temperature regulate it. I don't know how they do it. Oh, probably yeah. nobody would use it if, if it wasn't. They would yeah, go broke. Probably. You have to pay for it. You have to pay for it, right? Yeah, yeah, you have oh, to okay. pay for it. Um, well, yeah, the De the Democrats do understand that if you don't get the money coming in, then you have to shut the government program down. They do get that. So yep. there's a lot of things they don't get, but they, they do understand that part. That they don't always get, yeah, yeah. So uh, how long does it take for you to get, do you work in DC then? No, that, I actually, okay, our, our offices are in Virginia. Virginia. How far away is your office that you have to go to from um, where you live? I actually am blessed to live very, very close. Oh, that's um, good. Which is great. Um, so you don't have to deal with traffic and stuff no oh you are so uh, that's awesome <laughs> i know i am you, very very blessed take notes it. amanda take notes <laughs> this is a guy that taught in los angeles for 15 years take oh good notes yeah, yeah. no that's I, great that are, you, well. are you close to your brother yes i am um we're we're pretty close he he works in ministry actually so oh. um kind of a little bit of overlap with what we do which is really what cool. does he do um, what, what do you want to say um he oh he's gonna be mad at me i don't know his exact title if now he, if he doesn't want you to say don't worry i'm not gonna oh, no, no, no. it's totally fine um he he's a director at uh, andrew Womack ministries actually okay. i've heard of that yeah um yeah so he he really loves what he does and oh. yeah i i saw him a couple 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 weeks ago in july so that was really nice he seems like a nice man. I, I don't know him. I've never met him, but I've, 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 I think I've seen him somewhere. I, yeah. I heard, I heard him talk and uh, he was a nice, he seems like a nice man. Yeah. He's, he's great. I, I really enjoy whenever I get to see him, whenever I get to hang out with him. Um, but your mom is still in, in Chicago. No, uh, my mom is uh, in Kansas now. So. Oh, wow. She, yeah. How often did you guys move when you were growing up? It was only like three times. It just seems like it was a lot more. <laughs> How did you handle that? Was that devastating to you? Be honest. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad since I was homeschooled. Um, okay. I think it was a lot easier. So you weren't saying goodbye to like really close friends or anything? Yeah, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have to like say goodbye to my, my schools every time. And yeah, and that would be tough. You know? were, were they spaced out or were they three times in a row or what happened they were spaced out i because okay. we spent we i spent most of my childhood in illinois and then okay. um it was my later high school years in gotcha. arizona so it wasn't like crazy like jumping around all the time it just sounds like that whenever i talk about it because it's because yeah. it was so all of it was so recent now when you watch like hollywood or whatever when you watch romy mm -hmm. and michelle's high school reunion um or whatever, you know, these high school movies from the 80s, Fast Times at Ridgemont High or whatever. And I'm a Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That was filmed in Chicago, by the way. Yes. Um, do you feel like you missed out on something like deeply American or are you just like, mm -hmm. is your heart sealed and you're like, nope, I did not miss out at all. I, How do you feel about that? Are you ambivalent yeah. about that? I don't, I think that, you know, some, every once in a while, I'm like, oh, I wish I w wish I could have experienced that. But to me, it doesn't matter because I would much rather have the integrity of, you know, different types of curriculum or being able to 
study the things that I did that I may have been passionate about that you couldn't have studied like in a traditional classroom education. I think that is way more important. Mm. Um, wow. That's that's what matters to me. Like, and the experiences like we were we were able to take field trips or that's something really great about homeschooling. You know, go go into the field per like per se and experience stuff in the real world versus just sitting in front of a textbook and can you um, give an example of a field trip that you really liked oh we would go to a lot of operas which i i think really cultivated my my love for the arts and um that's everything i was i was very into like opera and classical music so that i think really helped with that um obviously being in chicago we had all the museums out there which were really great um yeah yeah you're lucky to have lived there Mm -hmm. did you uh did did your mom give you a choice or was it like you're going to the opera (laughs) no i wanted to um we we would we would go to the theater every year during christmas which was really fun Uh, whether that was like opera or some of the other theaters in chicago um, awesome. that was always a really cool thing that we look forward to. And then during the year two, if we had a chance, we would go over there. So, all right, I'm going to risk this question. I, I wasn't sure I was going to say anything about this, but I think that uh, probably a lot of people are wondering, so I'm just going to ask the, the dating issue. Is that a thing for your age? What, like when I grew up, people went on dates, mm-hmm. but sometimes I look at your generation and I'm like, I don't know how to even talk to you because like people talk about hooking up. I remember the first times I, I said the word hooking up and someone said, professor, that's not what that means anymore. Yep. And I was like, what does it mean? And they were, they didn't, they couldn't even tell me the exact meaning of it, but it had a range of meaning. But so yeah. obviously you're a Christian and you're coming at this from a Christian perspective, I'm hoping, mm-hmm. but yes. Um, so what what are your thoughts about that the romantic life at your yeah. age is kind of important because you have to like think about you know are you gonna have kids and if and yeah. even if you don't want to have kids and you don't feel called to that right. you probably do want to like not die alone and maybe <laughs> you're thinking about that at some point and you want to yeah. have fill your time with somebody um that's you know yeah. important to you romantically yeah, sure. so what how do you think about that yeah well I think one of the worst things to ever happen um to America and basically the world I guess is her hookup culture the the idea of um you know attached attachment lists yeah. dating in in a sense um and that's something that when it comes to the abortion issue actually right. is very very tied to that Big you time. saw on Twitter, a lot of people were going crazy. They're like, oh my gosh, it's the end of hookup culture. Hey, good. Um, mm-hmm. Because that's one of the worst things, like even scientifically, that that's a whole nother conversation, but just ha- going from person to person and whether you're actually hooking up with them or not, it's terrible for mental health. It's terrible for your health in general. Um, everything about that is so wrong. And that is that's something that's very much ruined American society, I, I believe. Um, the getting right. rid of the traditional traditional marriage, getting rid of the traditional family structure. Um, it's detrimental to kids. It's detrimental to your health. Um, honestly, I think that's a very big um, con- contribute to something that has contributed um, to some of the mental health struggles in general. But um, yeah, it's, I think that, I mean, dating, dating is, dating is hard. Finding somebody that has the same values, um, kind of, you know, the, the Christian values and the political values together. It's a very, very rare combination. Um, mm. somebody who shares your, your same lifestyle, whatever that may be. It's, yeah. it's definitely tough. Um, and I see a lot more, uh, I guess women in the conservative movement who have a very, very hard time with that. Um, just, just finding someone who, who shares the same values. So I think that's the biggest, that's probably the biggest problem when it comes to that is just values in general. Um, yeah. And character as well, character. I would say yeah, character values, all of that For men, 
I mean, I, I can't imagine what men are going through or young men are going through right now. Yeah. Um, they're probably, they don't realize how confused they are yeah. um, until later. That's a huge thing. I'm going to put that down as a prayer item for you, Amanda, yeah. is a good man. <laughs> yes. So, and I'm assuming that uh, you know what a man is. <laughs> like if yes. you were up for yeah. the Supreme Court. <laughs> And you right. were asked by the senator, what's a man? And you, you would be able to say, what would you say? A man who was born a man. <laughs> what is it? The An adult X, human male. XY chromosomes, XX. I, okay. I, I believe men is XX. They're going to risk wrong. <laughs> well, but, but, you know, the chromosome thing, I mean, that's, that's fine. That's good. But mm -hmm. it's usually you don't see anybody's chrome. I've never seen anybody's chromosomes. No, you have to be able to navigate your life uh, without looking at chromosomes. <laughs> at this point, we're going to need it on our birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so that's a that's a that's interesting. Does it does that? Um, how do you stay focused? Does that occupy any of your thoughts about that? You're you, do you are you worried about finding a good man? Um, I'm. I think about it, but I, I've just, I've given that one to God. Um, I trust him with that. Like, I'm, I'm not going, that's not going to be Did something. Did that happen at a specific time where you like, you were thinking about a lot and then you're like, you know what, I'm just going to give it to God. And it, it was like on um, a certain day or, or is it like a daily thing that you have to do? It's probably a monthly thing where I think I catch myself like being too concerned about it. I'm like, Hey, no, that's not in my hands. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's, that one's over to God. I'm not going to take time out of my, I guess, career, my, what I'm doing in my life to, you know, focus on just that alone. Um, yeah, it's on, it's in his hands. Do they, do they give you your own office there? Yes. Actually. Oh, that's cool. That is nice. <laughs> Man, I was teaching at the community college. They didn't even give me my own <laughs> office in Los Angeles. These damn, damn Democrats. Mm -hmm. Sorry for cussing. Oh, unbelievable. Um, no, um, we, we've I don't been, usually say the word Democrat. <laughs> right. We, we've been expanding a lot lately. So I, I had that privilege, which is nice. Well, Amanda, we are so happy to be able to talk to you. And you're such an interesting uh, young woman. And I just, well, I'll say this for myself. And I know I speak for millions of people. How do I know that? Because I just know it. <laughs> you are an encouragement and you are a light and we are so grateful that you exist and that you are who you are and we're interested in encouraging you and supporting you in any way we can to become so much, um, because you're going to be old you're going to be older when I'm getting old <laughs> so you're going to be running the country and when I can't do it so we really need <laughs> more people like you uh, that oh, are solid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, and, thank you. You know, so much. you're just an interesting person, and 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 it's been a delight to uh, have a conversation with you today. Thank you so much. I I really appreciate um, having me on, and it has been really fun to talk to you. So. Okay, we'll wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> thank See you. See you later. <laughs>